Hello friends, it's Kayla. Welcome to my most unhinged video concept yet, which is saying a lot. Around this time of year when I have an abundancy of ARCs and new releases I haven't read yet, I would do like a new releases vlog, an ARC vlog, and so I thought I would do that, but with a twist. I know that there are so many book community members who like only talk positively about books and it doesn't mean that they're not liking books that they read it's that they're only featuring the books that they like <laughs> me trying to explain this video out loud and starting to feel ridiculous um i feel like i haven't had a video in a while that is purely good vibes and you can't plan a video that you're gonna like all of the books because like that's not my life. I hate a lot of things that I read and I'm fine with hating a lot of things that I read. But what I thought I would do is have a positive only video. So what that means is I'm gonna read a whole bunch of things and I'm gonna vlog me reading a whole bunch of things. These are all 2022 releases and I have a couple more I'm picking up this week. This is clearly too much to read in the last like week or so of the month, but I didn't have a vlog planned for this month, but I have time to film a vlog. So this is my 2022 release vlog um, in which you only hear from me when I'm liking a book. As soon as I stop liking a book, the vlog stops and the next time you see me, I'll be talking about a book I like again. This is going to be an unsatisfying video because as soon as I stop liking something, you're not gonna see my final thoughts on it. But it will be satisfying for those of you who are sick of me talking negatively about books. I am feeling a little bit, a lot of bit insecure lately um, about how I always have like something negative to say in my videos. And I know that pe most people are fine with that, but I'm starting to get comments that even in a video where I'm reading a whole bunch of like four star books, there's also like one and two stars in there and people will comment and say like i'm so tired of you <laughs> reading books you don't like like you need to read things that you're gonna like i just want you to pick things that you think you'll like and i i do feel like i do that i do pick up the books that i want to read and that i think i will like but it's not coming across that way and it's been like a year maybe two since i had like an only five star vlog and i want to recreate that magic for myself and for my existence on the internet to just have like a joy-filled video but i can't plan that ahead of time because i don't know how i'm gonna feel with books so i also haven't filmed just like a hangout with me a week in my life in a while so you're gonna see me doing things reading things and liking things only high ratings in this video how exciting okay so the book that i'm going to start with today um i'm in my laundry closet because i was just going to grab a cooler uh, i'll talk to you about that in a second <laughs> but i'm going to start with out there by kate folk which is a series a uh, selection an anthology a collection of stories sci-fi fabulous that kind of vibe very excited about it but I am just now realizing that the thing that I have to do today that I'm going to take you along with me <laughs> briefly to do, I can't fulfill properly because my cooler, since we bought a new washer dryer um, that's big, it actually blocked like my cooler in. Like I can't fit the cooler. It's smaller than it looks, but it doesn't, it's not going to fit through that hole, <laughs> which means you're going to have to go with me to go pick up a cooler and pick up my kid from school because Today, he has to go deliver sausages to the neighborhood. <laughs> Doesn't it just sound silly? So they're doing a fundraiser because um, his school is going on a trip soon. Well, early next year when he's in seventh grade. Um, and they're fundraising. And one thing that they're doing is like going door to door and selling. You know how some kids like sell popcorn or cookie dough, whatever. His school's doing sausages. So I need to go pick him up from school with a cooler full of ice. And we have to drive around and drop off the sausages that he has sold. To the neighborhood but my my cooler is inaccessible so add another thing to my list of things to do today but first let me read story one and two from here and hopefully you see me after i do so <laughs> okay here's where we're at well where we're literally physically at is the library because i had some holds come in and i didn't realize how many there were normally i will reserve like 30 at a time i'll go through my list and i'll reserve them all and then i go in to the actual app or website and I changed the delivery date of them to fit like when certain videos are coming out. But I forgot to do that. And then they all showed up within like two days. <laughs> so I am planning on reading, there's a little sneak peek of something in my July TBR. This one I also did need, 
because I'm reading this soon. But this one I'm not planning on reading until like the end of the year. Um, but maybe, I don't know, there's such a long wait. Either I'm gonna return it right now or I'm gonna read it pretty quickly. I also have another cozy mystery. I don't know when I'm gonna read that. Like a outdoor wilderness story, as if I need another one of those. I just saw this and thought it was beautiful. <laughs> and then this I have heard is weird. That's where I'm at with um, too many books, too little time. Oh, and behind me, the flaws of living in a small town is there's nowhere here that sells coolers. So I bought like a grocery bag on wheels and hopefully that's what will be helpful to the boys. And I filled it with ice packs and I'm gonna trail them around the neighborhood as they deliver sausages. Sorry, I'm in the car again. I feel like it's not the most exciting footage. Just me here. But you know what? It's spring. We're busy. Uh, delivered all the sausages successfully. And today uh, we have baseball in a couple hours. First we're going out for breakfast. And we're not cutting off the vlog yet. So good news. I have read I think five stories in here so far. And they've all been five stars. All of them. I'm having such a good time. And it's grittier than I thought it would be. Considering like the pretty bubble gum cover. I thought it'd be like... It is fun sci-fi, but it's also like a little shocking sci-fi. The first story is called Out There and it's been my favorite so far. It's about um, like AI men called Blots and it was fascinating and there are so many takeaways from it. So like you're on a dating app and you wanna date a real man, but unfortunately some of the men you meet are robots, but you don't realize that because they're so realistic seeming. But the way that you know it's a blot is because like blots are perfect and they're like the ideal mate. So when you're dating someone, all the red flags, things that would normally be red flags in a man, you see as almost positive things or things you're willing to ignore because at least you know he's not a blot because he's not perfect. Anyway, that's my favorite. We have to go. I'll tell you about the other stories later because they're all so good. So. We just went for a vegan breakfast. It was fantastic on the lake. And now we're sitting here playing a rock game. Everybody has to find a rock. Okay, this time we're gonna do a rock with the most stripes. And then we all have to open our hand at the same time. Three, two, one. Mine has about five stripes. We also did a rock that looks most like a tooth. Okay, next point up for grabs is a rock that mo looks most like a letter of the alphabet. Or a number. Yeah, a number or a letter. Oh, Liam did a 10. Look at my seven, you guys. What'd you do? Is that a U? An R. Oh, sure. The one that looks most like a rock. Most like a rock? Okay, I went, no, I'm joking. Oh, the one that looks the, not the weirdest. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine's like connected rocks. Yeah, yours is cool. Ooh, I like that one a lot. I like this one the best. This is my rock from Planet Long Dong. Oh, Rob. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna tell you about all of the stories, but the other one that was my favorite is called, what's it called? Heart Seeks Brain. And the concept is like, imagine we live in a world where the aesthetics of your internal organs matter the same way as your external appearance. So like people, like someone's kink is like removing a small bit of your liver every once in a while and like keeping it because it like mean like that's a part of your body that they love so much they like want it. And instead of there being like ass men versus boob men, there's like circulatory bros and gastro guys so like there's it's like you're more attractive to someone because a certain artery is three centimeters longer than the average woman and like that's so sexy it was a fucking weird and i'm obsessed with it now it's time for baseball and i'll film like a little bit maybe liam will get a run in we'll see a lot of baseball's been canceled this year because of the rain practices and games so this is one of his final games of the year and i hope it goes well for them Ooh, good try. 
he's cute. There we go. Okay, I'm home very briefly, and then we're heading out to our friend's house for a game night who we haven't seen in months. So that would be fun. Liam's team did not win, but they did their best. And now I'm doing some bookmark pictures before we head out uh, so we can restock the Etsy shop. And my mom recently went to like a rock and gem show um, and picked up some really pretty ones that I feel like I've never seen or haven't seen in a while. And they're so pretty. I only managed to read one more story. I'm going to try to finish the book today, but I don't know if that's realistic. Um, but the next one I read was so good. The premise was kind of standard. It was about this house and um, there was like this locked door and it was like, what's behind the locked door? But then it completely uh, turned, she just turned the story on its head and she did something very different with it that was super interesting. I really need to pick up more short story collections from one author because they really almost always go better. And I guess it makes sense because like if I start a short story collection from an author and I'm not enjoying it, then I'll stop reading it. But if I am enjoying it, I'll keep reading it and it'll keep being the same type of writing throughout the entire thing and then I end up loving it so much. When with an anthology of a bunch of authors, like naturally some are gonna land some of them aren't. And I always think of it as it's such a good way to get introduced to all of these different authors, but then it's almost never a five-star read. But like comparing this to How Have We Go in the Dark, this is just such a good pairing. I feel like if you enjoyed one, you would enjoy the other. And it's funny because, well, it's not funny. Proven by evidence that my friend Adriana, the reason I'm reading out there is because of her. And we both also loved How High We Go in the Dark this year. So definitely recommend them both in tandem and I hope it continues to be incredible. I can't see why it wouldn't be. And I feel like I haven't had this feeling in a while that's like I don't have enough time to read, but I'm enjoying the thing I'm reading so much that I'm like angry about all the things that I'm doing. A lot of my reading lately has been fine. Like I've even read some great books, but I haven't had this feeling that's like, I need to get back to it like right now. And it's good for the vlog because uh, we haven't had to pause yet. Great news, five stars. I love this. This will go down to history is one of my favorite short story collections of all time. I know I said like sci-fi vibes, but a lot of them are just speculative generally, just like a little bit odd and like laugh out loud funny. Not the entire time, like not joke, 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 but more like very ridiculous statements and moments that I was just like, what I was going on? I actually took notes about my favorite ones. Um, and something that I was hoping was gonna happen is there was a little like full circle comeback moment. The stories were not connected. So it's not like how high we go in the dark, the sea of tranquility, though that's not a short story collection, I know. But I would categorize this like with those books. But there was like one story at the end that referenced another. And I was like thinking that it might and that it did. And then I was happy. My favorites were the first story and then last woman on earth. And then Heart Seeks Brain, which I told you about. Shelter, which I told you about. Tahoe, which was very good. Doe Eyes, which was interesting. And Turkey Rumble. That, yeah, it was, some of these stories were like, I will think about them for years to come. There's a lot of interesting societal commentary you could take away from these, a lot of things you could interpret as like, even in these speculative scenarios, even in the apocalypse, even when the characters are dealing with all of this wild, crazy stuff a million years in the future, there are still things that humanity cares about. Like there will still be a presence of jealousy and vengeance, loneliness and attention seeking behavior and it was all just so interesting i had such a good time it took me quite a few days to read this one i haven't physically read a book in a little bit full out like i do combo reads m the majority of the time um so i thought while i'm used to physically reading before i get distracted by five audiobooks i'm just gonna dive right into another physical reading experience because this is an arc called not good for maidens by tori bovolino which comes out actually I think in a couple days, which means I definitely want to get to it because by the time this vlog is out, this will be out. And hopefully because the publisher sent it to me so kindly, you will see a review for it 
in this video. I, I don't know. We'll see. I read the first chapter while I was on vacation. It was very intriguing. I did like a little try a chapter tag in here of the five books. This was like the second most intriguing first chapter that I read. We're dealing with the goblin market. Um, I'm excited about it now. So it's part of the good vibes. Tomorrow we continue the good vibes with finally getting my hair done. I've been using like a brown dry shampoo on my hair um, that feels terrible, but it's been covering up my grays. And tomorrow I finally am doing a re just invigoration because my hair is feeling so heavy and sad lately. So next time I see you, I will be in a great mood, I think, with this and with this. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, today I have my hair appointment. Check it out, here's the before. I think they have, Liam has food poisoning. He got really, really sick after we went to a barbecue yesterday and he's been throwing up all night. And then Rob was up most of the night with him and now he can't go to work because he's so tired. So they just get to rest today. I'm gonna read this. I think it's going well, well, I'm only like, 40 pages in and it's reminding me a lot of the raven cycle like with especially with the names and just kind of like the vibe of all of these women like living in this house but like we've got sisters may and where is it neela just like we have the sisters um mora and neve and the main character's name is lou the main character's name is blue it just feels like something that subconsciously a big raven cycle fan would do so I'm gonna look up um, this author on Twitter and see if she's ever tweeted about the Raven Cycle because I just feel the vibes. Okay, I'm done. Here's the hair. Thrilling. Um, I didn't read anything, but I'm headed home right now to do some reading sprints on my channel for my channel members. I think I'm gonna have some book to be friends pop in for the reading sprints, so that'll be fun. And I'm hoping to get through a good chunk of my book. So my book is going well. I'm out running errands today. Liam's food poisoning is over. This is the release date of Not Good For Maiden. So I just grabbed the audiobook because I wanted to give it a listen. I think it's good. I'm gonna listen to it while I drive around and do some errands. Um, this author definitely has read The Raven Cycle and talked about The Raven Cycle. Just something to note for myself, just because I find it interesting, the books that people come up with after being inspired by The Raven Cycle. It's just, it's interesting. I think I'm halfway through. I made some progress through the sprints yesterday. But right now I'm hitting up HomeSense and Value Village and the grocery store. Oh, and Indigo because it's a release day. It's a Tuesday. So um, the new Riley Sager is available for me to pick up. I think that's it because my order of Juniper and Thorn I don't think is ready. Oh my gosh, I definitely forgot that the house across the lake was a paperback. I feel like all of my other Riley Sager are hardcovers. Oh, but I love a big tall floppy paperback and then this one i think so many of you will be excited that i got a mass market paperback as one of my next cozy mysteries it's called scene of the climb since i love outdoorsy hiking mountain type books why not fit that into a cozy mystery vlog i also looked to see what the hardcover of not good for maidens looked like and it was fine nothing special so it's basically about the goblin market it's like so there's this poem in the 18 60s by Christina something or other called the, called the Goblin Market and it's about like sisters and one of them like gets you know tempted into buying fruit from the Goblin Market consuming it when she's not supposed to it's a story about like it's a cautionary tale about temptation I think it's also a story about like the power of family because the other sister essentially saves her by like stealing fruit or something 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 all's well in the end and the goblins don't take over her life though the goblin is like a love interest for one of the characters so we have two women the sisters um we have bisexual and pansexual rep which is great and one of them is getting lured into a romantic relationship with a goblin girl but those are few and far between it seems to be only like 
two page little moments that we get that situation although as the book goes those chapters are actually getting longer so never mind and then we hop back into present day where we're following those women it's like their daughter slash niece and in the first hundred pages of her story she has no idea what the goblin market is doesn't know there's another world outside of her own and she's just learning about it um, she's upset that her family never told her about it to begin with but now she's gonna have to go in and save one of her aunts who has gone missing in the goblin market. I apologize for having to pause the vlog. It happened, but we're moving on with good vibes. I am gonna lie in the park for a little bit this morning and read Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leto. Start it, see how it goes. Okay, my camera died literally two seconds after I filmed that clip in the park. I don't know, I thought I had a fully charged battery. Anyway, I got 60 pages into Sometime in Summer while I was there, and then I drove here. Now I'm back at home, and I'm doing reading sprints with Meg on her channel. She's reading The Library of the Unwritten, in case you needed to know, and I'm going to continue reading this. I hope to get a good couple hundred pages in in the next couple hours, and then I have to go pick up my dad from his physio and pick up Liam and do dinner and, you know, all the things. I also have more library books to pick up. So I wonder if after this, I'll, actually, I don't know what I'm going to read next. I'm not going to think about it. So this is about a girl who's um, moving. Well, she's going to stay on the East Coast. She grew up in the West Coast, lives in LA. And for two months, she's going to spend her summer on the East Coast in Rockport. They just arrived and it's like the type of town where you can walk everywhere very small town cozy seaside vibes the cottage they're staying in has like creaky stairs and it's literally on the ocean she's talking about the humidity it feels very atmospheric katrina leno always does a great job of setting i always feel like i'm there her books usually have like a little bit of a magical element but not like straight up magic. So I'm wondering when that's gonna come into play. Um, I feel very connected to this character already. I think she's like 13. She's talking about how she just got her period. Me when I was 13. Um, she has a purple bedroom, me when I was 13. Oh, and she also has those glow in the dark stars on her ceiling that sometimes fall off and hit her while she's sleeping. Me when I was 13. It's also mentioned things like Stephen King and Secret History because her mom owns a bookstore and uh, Pink Floyd was even mentioned. I just, I've, there's very good vibes for me. Her mom has announced that she's closing the bookstore and I don't know if it's gonna be like her trying to save the bookstore or her coming to grips with the bookstore closing or what even the rest of the plot is going to be beyond her just like getting out of her town and kind of having some new experiences, but it's going well. So I'll see you when the sprints are over. Hi me again, one page later and I think I know what the little magical thing is. There's talk about a comet coming and I think the comet is going to affect like her life or her perspective on life or something. We took a little detour and bought a PlayStation. We've been looking for one for months and it's a great day. That's all my updates. Hello, welcome to my cupboard. I have been having just the most chill, peaceful morning and now it's noon and i'm going to make myself my first coffee coffee what should i show you where are the visuals coffee oh my god i'm almost out i went for a nice long walk all by myself i didn't bring an audiobook let alone my camera it was just very peaceful existence in the world i planned out some content I'm editing some videos. I'm about to film something in a second. And other than that, I just have no like obligations for the day. And I'm excited to just be taking it easy and not doing a lot. Oh, I also potted my little cactuses. This doesn't look right. I need a different pot actually, but that's all that I had. I don't know if that I really vlogged while I was at the nursery or what I got afterwards. I don't remember. <laughs> I got myself some little cactuses. I think that this is really encouraging like my slow relaxing day because the book has those vibes and I'm loving it a lot up until the halfway point which is where I'm at now I was pretty sure it was gonna be four stars it's really nice it's really good I wasn't thinking like ooh, this is gonna be the five star Katrina Leno hold on that solidified her as an all-time favorite. Cause I recently talked about in my like what is a favorite author video that she has gotten two five stars from me Summer of Salts 
and whatever this other one is. I think there's a W in it. But I really feel like in my heart, Katrina Leno is a favorite author, but I needed one more five star. I wasn't thinking this was gonna be it because it's like younger YA, it's just about a girl, like on the beach, like how good could it really be? Ooh, I love this. The answer is pretty freaking good. This is like Katrina Leno imparting her like motherly wisdom onto people. <laughs> I don't think she is a mother, but like, it's just like the things that mothers would tell their children. It feels like beautiful life lessons that you're not even thinking of as life lessons, but they would be such great life lessons for the age range that would be like, this is targeted at. Let's go to the couch. I'll try to make sense. Even though Anna is struggling in certain aspects of her life, is insecure about certain things, um, and is imperfect, you can tell she had a really good upbringing. And so she'll say things like, um, like simple things like, okay, her phone got wet and she put it in rice to dry it out and her mom after two days was like oh it's probably fine now and she was like well now let me leave it in there for one more day just to make sure which is such a simple scene and isn't trying to impart any type of it like there's no commentary on it but it's just like subconsciously it's like oh yeah you don't need to have your phone all the time it's great that there's a character who has a great relationship with technology and it's just fine being without her phone for another day like there's something to be said about reading about characters who are aspirational in very clear like intentional ways like they're so strong and so brave and all these things are spelled out for you but there's also just like in simple slow kind of like judy bloom vibes those characters just living their everyday lives are also aspirational without feeling like you're being beaten over the head with like moral talking points i guess it's also great that her parents though they're divorced or they're on their way to getting divorced have a fantastic relationship and i think that would be a really good thing for people who might not have that in their lives to see and then what brought it to a four to a five star for me already at the halfway point like i'm pretty sure about it because i love what i think is happening um and the little bit of speculative situation i don't think i'm going to be able to talk about what that is by the end in case of spoilers which is why i understand why it's being marketed as like a little bit magical but like no one's talking about what that thing is so i'm excited to see if i'm right about that too because it's just it's very good it's also not a wildly new concept but i love it i'm probably gonna finish this in the next two hours so i'll let you know when i'm done so as anticipated, this was a four and a half or a five star. Don't look at my socks. I don't feel like there's a lot I can really say about this. I just found it to be exactly what I expect from Katrina Leno. I thought it was very slow, but in a beautiful way. It was really like a peaceful story about just like a girl, 14 years old, learning about how to interact with the world, how you need to give your friends a second chance, how she comes to understand the end of her parents relationship and copes with how her life is changing all of these things are happening to her all at once and it's obviously overwhelming and her parents encouraging her to spend the summer in a different part of the country is just like to have her kind of broaden her horizons and it goes exactly the way that you expect it to with that little bit of like weirdness so good and now i need to decide what to read next and i was just thinking about all the things that i held up at the beginning of the video because obviously well i don't know if it's obvious i'm not going to get to all of these and i'm sure that somebody was excited about each of the titles that i was showing so i don't want to disappoint anybody but also i'm going to walk through my thought process i just think that ordinary monsters is a little too long to complete in this specific month. I really can't afford to get into a reading slump either right now and that's what long books do to me a lot of the time because I have a super ambitious first week of July TBR. And then I'm not really in a thriller mystery mood right now so I'm gonna hold off on this one until summer ween. I think it'll be fun to talk through a highly anticipated thriller um, in those daily vlogs. Well, they're not gonna be daily. I'm gonna do four over the seven days. And then this one, I also am holding off until July. And that's mostly because I wanna read a short story collection each month. And when I read too many, I burn out on them. And I already did two, three this month. And we're left with these three. Juniper and Thorn has not shown up in the mail, so that one's off the list. But I actually have a couple more to add to the contender list because I just stopped by the library again and had more things. 
So here's three more. Um, I have Bitter by Aquaki Mezzi. I have Things They Lost by Oquiri Odour. And I have Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. These ones I heard about more recently, so they're not really at the top of my mind. But I do really think that Bitter could be a good choice for today because it's short. I'm heading out to Liam's baseball practice soon, so I can read a little bit before while I'm there, a little bit after. And also I gave Pet four and a half stars. So if anything's gonna be four or five stars, like it's a sequel, this seems like a good choice. Or it's not a sequel, it's a prequel. It's 250 pages, as is Woman Eating, pretty much. I've heard this one's slow, but also I guess Hide is also just over 200 pages. And I'm sure some, but I'm just scared that this is gonna make the video pause and I don't want it to, because if I start reading it and I don't love it, I feel like people are gonna be mad at me because I didn't review it in this video. But that's going into it with such like negativity. And this is about positive vibes, but this one's also really long. And I feel like I should start with it because I don't wanna leave a 400 page book until the end. Oh my God, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna start hide. I just decided. I'll check in with you at the 50 page mark. I wasn't planning on updating you again tonight. I was gonna wait until the morning but I have a feeling this might be my last update for you. Vibes right now, 63 pages in, cause I remembered that I read the first like 20 while I was doing a try a chapter tag at our little dome house. And so now I've read like 40 more pages and I'm on to day two of this like survival game at an abandoned amusement park. All of these people are invited and they have to like stay hidden the whole time and if they're found then they lose. We've gotten a good setup for all the characters at this point. There's too many of them. Um, there's a lot of standing around talking about the competition and not competing. And they all sound like teenagers even though they're supposed to be fully grown adults. So vibes right now are good, bordering, fine. So Hopefully I'll see you in the morning. New day, new book. I am reading Woman Eating today. This is by Claire Coda. And I'm really into vampire stories right now, but I don't feel like the books that get recommended on like the list of vampire books, that's not necessarily what I'm after. I put this on my TBR because like I talked about last year, I loved, you know, Down Among the Sticks and Bones. Hold on, let me just grab things for like visual intrigue so I don't have to edit too much. So these are like vampire adjacent stories. The last way. Down Among the Sticks and Bones. A Dowry of Blood. Maybe even this other book club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, though I feel like this is more of what I would consider like <laughs> a traditional vampire story or what I understand vampire stories to be. They're not paranormal romances. They're not high action about, you know, bloodlust and tearing people apart, but they are vampire-y for sure. And so when I look at this, I think of it in the same way that I think of Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour as a ghost story. It's a ghost story, but it's more about inner turmoil healing, acceptance, grief. Um, there's ghosty things, but it's not a ghost story in a traditional sense, I guess. So this is supposedly like literary and slow and about a woman kind of being on her own for the first time after putting her mother in some type of institution. Gosh, this is a long synopsis. The point is she's living away from her vampire mother for the first time. Her mother who always supplied like the pig blood for her um, made her feel bad about being a vampire. And now she is living on her own. She's an artist, she's encountering different people and she's just like coming into her own as a vampire and trying to find blood, trying not to get tempted by human beings blood and trying to do things the way that she feels she should do things. I think the vibes are gonna be good. I hope the vibes are gonna be good. And I hope I'll see you with more stuff about it in a second. Today I am filming my uh, mid-year book freak out and then I have a movie night with channel members watching the skies everywhere which is going to be so fun and then editing everything is going to take a bulk of my day so that's just what I'm up to while I read this as I go okay here's an update 
I don't know why I decided to start vlogging now. I put cardboard in my window while I watch movies, so I'm not super backlit. My update is that I hated the Skies Everywhere adaptation, but I'm loving woman eating. So we've got two very, very different vibes going on today. But my live show is over, everybody disliked it, and I'm excited that I have good vibes to continue with this though. It's pretty much exactly the tone that I was expecting, and it's a lot about this woman and her inability to access blood. She has to like find a new source and she's craving blood. But it's not like, I don't think throughout the entire book she's going to like consume anybody. That's just not the vibe that I get. It's more about her coming to terms with what she is and eventually I think getting access to blood. So she's a performance artist is how she like sells it to people. So she's staying in these apartments um there's this guy there's like a little love interest kind of scenario but i don't think it's going to be a romance there was this scene with him and her like getting close to his blood but she's always like talking herself down it's definitely super slow for you know a 200 page book it feels long but i'm really liking it like super duper liking it yeah so i loved it five stars my reading year is just going so well this is one of those books that i love and i wouldn't recommend to very many people like i would never recommend this to somebody who says they love vampire books i would recommend it to somebody who loves sad girl books and like might enjoy a little paranormal vibe because lydia's just like a regular girl dealing with going to school and making friends and trying to find where she fits in the world. She is grappling with the idea of like, am I inherently evil? I also love a mother-daughter dynamic and I'm gutted that this is $35. This and out there, like I wanna go purchase these. I'm so glad I borrowed them from the library. I'm so glad they were fantastic, but now I want to own them and they're so goddamn expensive. So I will be keeping my eye out for a good sale. It's just, I'm about to read Bitter. That's my next pick. And I know that books aren't priced based on their actual value. They're priced more so for the audience. But the fact that these are identical, look at them, they're identical. And because this one is for teens and they want teens to be able to afford it, it's $23 and this is 33. I just don't like it. So here's hoping that the video continues to go up and I get to see you and talk to you about Bitter. Okay, hi. We're at a multi-day baseball tournament. I just had to walk away because I need to update you on this book because I've been wanting to update you all day, but like, I'm busy. I'm reading in between games. I was reading on the drive. And if I don't tell you now how much I'm loving it, I won't be like reviewing it until I get home late tonight. Cause I'm already 250 pages into this book and I love it. It's like a magical story, but it's kind of, it's also like a bodyguard romance, which apparently I'm really into. It also has the trope of like, um, if I touch you, I'll kill you, which I also love. Uh, so I started this before Bitter because I have really high expectations of my love for Bitter that I was like, I don't want to end the vlog with a pause, right? I want to end it with what I think I'm going to finish and give five stars. So I was reading this before that just in case I DNF'd it or I didn't want to vlog it anymore, but that's not the case. Um, I'm obsessed. Really, really, really into it. Okay, it's been a super long day super hot day i think we're all sunburned i'm really tired but i definitely don't want to wait till tomorrow to like explain this book to you and talk it through a little bit i'm gonna read some more as i fall asleep because as i'm sure i got across really really enjoying it and the good vibes continued because liam got a run today it was incredible he got a good hit made it to home it was fantastic now onto the actual plot of this so it's the first book in a series, so I'm worried about how it's going to end. But we're basically in this world where there is protection from like, I don't even remember, like demons or demonic creature, beast, something that I don't think these characters have ever really seen. So it's not described in any way, but there are people with powers, gods, essentially. Um, there's only so many of them so often and they protect the society from whatever and there's like a cycle of every 
five years is how long you have to train, I think, to be a finestra. I think that's how you pronounce it. And she has five years to also like find her partner. And they're called something else that starts with an F. And she, in the five years, the five years is almost up, she has found three suitors, um, married them, and then killed them because her touch is deadly. And the whole thing about finding her perfect match is that like they can, and they enhance each other's power and there's only a certain amount of them in society too who like have these powers so she's accidentally killed a whole bunch of people and so this time around she is trying to because she like she's the god of this entire society so she's essentially in control she can do whatever she wants but she also is following the rules as she's supposed to but now she's taking power into her own hands and she's like instead of just marrying someone and killing them again because well, I don't really know why it's happening. Um, but she's like bringing a bunch of the, whatever they're called, the people who could be her match. She's bringing them and trying to like hone in on their powers and get to know them before she like marries them and touches them and potentially kills them. Um, but along the way, she's starting to distrust the people around her, like the government essentially. And she's hiring her own bodyguard to protect her. So she goes to like a bad part of town finds like a bad guy and he's her bodyguard. And of course they become interested in each other. He's very grumpy and he has a lot of secrets in his past that she's slowly finding out. I just love this setup because I don't want to mention the Ravis cycle again. I'm sorry, but I am. This doesn't remind me of it like at all, but there is something about um, this like idea of not being able to touch people or not being able to kiss people um, because it could kill them that I just really like, not just in the tension that it creates between characters, but in the like psychological impact that not being able to do these things has on you and like your entire life is impacted. But the thing with this trope is it always gets kind of silly because there's only one way it can really go. Like eventually she's gonna touch the boy that she's interested in or the girl um her suitors are men and women this guy's not her suitor but like i don't know i just feel like they're gonna end up together and there's always a point in a book that has this plot point this trope that she eventually gets to touch or kiss or whatever and it's because we find out that like they have this cosmic connection like from birth and like there's something that makes them the perfect match like there's something so special about him or he's like secretly some type of like opposite of her in the world and because of that their powers like um cancel each other out or there's some like magical transformation that he goes through or she goes through or if they're both women you know what i mean like i don't know how i want this plot point to go i don't have a solution for how it can be not not feel just like kind of gimmicky i guess inherently it is gimmicky like not being able to touch your true love but i don't want it to get gimmicky which is why honestly i hoped and thought that this was adult and i want to read this trope in an adult novel because i feel like i don't know there's just more that we can cover more ideas brought to the table that don't feel cheesy and i'm associating cheesy with teen anyway we've got alessa and we've got dante and they might be one of my favorite couples of the year but we'll see how it goes so i'm giving this vicious grace four stars i had a good time but the first half was better than the second half i continue to enjoy it though i also don't want to hype it up too much because i wouldn't say this is groundbreaking or does anything different than any other book i've ever read it's like a pretty basic story but i still found it interesting and the character dynamics were good um it's like I, if I were to rank it, it'd be like romance first, characters, not in how much I enjoy, but how much of like the book is taken up by romance, characters, plot, action. The action does take off at the end. And I just found out this is a duology when I thought it was a series, like a, a trilogy or more. I finished this thinking I probably won't continue, but this was a good time knowing it's a duology. I, I'm pretty sure I will complete it if I still remember everything that went down a year or two from now when the sequel comes out. But what's fun about this is there is a countdown and the action really takes off at the end. So you know that the second book is going to be very like 
intrigue, deadly, big action vibes. But the countdown is so interesting and it really sets itself up well. I think the intent of the book is very clear. You know where it's going to go. You know the goals of all the characters. You know what's going to happen at the end if she succeeds in finding her Fonte or if she doesn't. It has a very clear like power structure, um, magical dynamic. Everything is well explained. What each individual character wants and their desires for themselves, for the future, for where they live. And I also think there's a great message in the idea of like godhood versus society so it's like there's you know this rule book essentially of how the gods are supposed to behave the power that has been entrusted upon the people in society um what they're supposed to do and then how society has interpreted those things and kind of goes and takes the things that the gods have said to fit their own narrative and to control society the way that they want to but like saying that it's the gods that want it so it is about challenging that power structure as an 18 year old with magical powers and i thought it was a good time i do definitely recommend it for those who read this type of thing often and want good romance vibes anyway i'm gonna go start bitter and i just found out that bonnie turpin narrates the audiobook or I already knew that and I just got re-reminded of it. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook, which will be fun because she didn't narrate Pet. I don't think so. And I always rate Bonnie Turpin's audiobooks really high. So I can't see this going poorly. But obviously, like, you know, based on how much time there is left in this video, you know if I completed it or not already. I don't know, but you do. Hydrated Thank with you. the Fuji's fin Fiji's Finest. I can't open it. Oh, one sorry. One. Hi, I'm halfway through Bitter. I'm liking it a lot, but I decided to go on an impulsive hike. So that's where we're at, at 8 p.m. Thank you, my friend. And then I'll finish Bitter when I'm done. It's very hot out. I feel like it's a very different vibe from Pet, and if you read this immediately after Pet, I feel like it'd be a little jarring, because I recall that one being, a, like, it did deal with hard topics, but it was a little whimsical. This one is, like, intense and more real world. So I'll talk to you more about it in a sec. I didn't realize how quickly I would fly through bitter so I didn't get to talk to you about it like at all so pet is a story about a girl named jam um, and she lives in a place called Lucille and the whole thing about that book is that people say that there are no more monsters in the city so apparently there used to be monsters and the origin story of monsters has to do with like art and blood and like the monsters coming alive from paintings and but she encounters like monsters so she's questioning you know did the monsters ever really leave or like how do you deal with monsters when people deny that there are monsters in the world so there's a lot of like parallels with the real world obviously and a lot of metaphorical stuff a lot of good takeaways and then this one is the kind of origin story and I don't know if anything in here would be like a spoiler for Pet, since I don't remember Pet super well. And the synopsis just talks about um, our main character, Bitter, and how she gets involved in this school and then gets involved with um, the revolution. So, but it doesn't talk anything like more about her, so I just don't know if we're supposed to talk about how everything is connected Anyway, since we know this is the origin story, this is like how the monsters came to be to begin with and how they got rid of monsters. So it's a lot about revolution, a lot about how art and music are important parts of activism and how everybody has a different role to play and then not everybody needs to be doing the same thing, but everybody needs to be an active participant and like where you fit. Um, because Bitter has had a rough upbringing and so her being accepted into this school, she wants her life to go a certain way. Um, but then she gets involved with these people who are, you know, just not conforming. And she doesn't know if she should get involved in that scene. Um, but 
she does. And it's not like nuanced references to the real world where I feel like Pet was that. This is very overt, kind of like a guide for young people of how to participate in revolution, how to recognize injustice, how to enact change. And I think it's a pretty bold choice to make this the main character of the prequel because there are some other characters um, that we could follow and I would actually read from more if this author decided to expand because there are some really interesting characters in the series that we see. So overall I'm giving this a four. I didn't love it but I had a really good time. I don't feel like I have any issues with it at all and I'm glad that I picked it up. So I didn't even realize I reviewed five books in this video for you. Three library books, two arcs, which feels very good. I normally have TBRs of five books and I didn't plan to read five books in this video because I didn't know how many books I'd get to, how many I'd finish. So it's kind of cool that I ended up finishing five. I actually thought it would be less. If I were to guess before the video started, I would have assumed, not specifically from this stack um, that I read, but I would have assumed it would be more of like a four, three split, like three I reviewed by the end, four that I didn't. But a lot of things went better than I expected them to. I think this order is how I would rank my favorites by the end and if you want to keep an eye out for my wrap up I'll discuss the two that I stopped the vlog for. I really thought I would stop the vlog more often like that's that was the whole reason of making that the title was I thought that would be a much more common occurrence so who knows if this gimmicky video even makes any sense. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I will see you as usual in a couple days. Bye!